What is up everybody and welcome to the video. So before we continue on, I just want to take a second real quick to give you all a little reminder that I finally got some shirts made for the channel. I'll show you how they look. We have the Before Outdoors on the front left chest right there. Pretty sick. Then we flip it over and we have the big old just original Texas logo with the hunter and the fisherman right around where Galveston Bay would be. So if you want to pick one of these up so I can go out and film some more videos, I'm selling them over PayPal and they are $27 plus shipping, which evens out to just at 32 bucks. And every three shirts sold completely funds a new video. So if you want one, send me an email at beforeoutdoors at gmail.com or a DM on Instagram at before underscore outdoors and I'll get you all set up and tell you how to pay. Now, if you don't want to spend that much money, but still want to help support the channel, show some love and help fund some videos, I also have some stickers made right here. These are going to be only $7 and that includes shipping. So slap them on your kayak, slap them on your cooler, wherever you put them, I'm sure they'll look good. But once again, guys, if you want to purchase a shirt or some stickers, send me an email or a DM on Instagram. I will have all that information in the description down below. I thank you guys so much for the support. These videos wouldn't be possible without y'all. Uh, that's all I got to say right now. I'm going to shut up and let's go ahead and get into the video. I hope you all enjoy. So we're walking out here to the spot, just pulled up and my goodness, guys, the other day I thought the tide was low. But this is a low tide. The water must be out 80 yards. I don't know, it's crazy. I see everyone posting that this is the lowest tide they've seen in years. This is the lowest tide I've seen ever. The good news is though, I guess that means the fish are going to be more concentrated. So today we're gonna to try to bust the myth that fish don't bite after a cold front. I believe they do. I think you just have to work for a little more. And I think that you just have to find some that are willing to eat. So let's get out here. Let's uh, try to get some deeper water. Some water that's up to our waist would be nice. Let's see if we can catch something. Y'all stay tuned. The tide is so far out today that I can go to places I've never been before. So I'm starting out in a different area where there's a bunch of oyster back that way and then scattered oyster just all throughout here. I'm just going to wade this little, pretty much just like a, imagine like a ridge line all the way down to my, to where I like to go. But some deeper water on this side. There's a channel over here. And we're gonna see if we can pull something out of the, the edge of the channel. So real quick, I wanna go over the conditions today. Obviously it's super low tide right now. We are a day post cold front where the winds were blowing like, I believe 25 to 30 for like hours, like almost all day. So we're post cold front right now. It's super nice out though. It was in like the upper 40s this morning, but now it's probably upper 50s. Zero wind, almost zero wind. It's very low, blowing less than five or six and super clear water and even though the water is really blown out right now I don't even think it's completely low tide or it might be there's a low tide this morning sometime mid mornings and then around I think like noon it's supposed to switch and start coming in the other way so I don't know what time it is I feel like maybe it's 11 something probably 11 11 30 so we're just gonna sit out here fish this and hopefully that tide changes around I have nothing to do so I'll be out here for a few hours and hopefully we got some fish if that tide changes and starts pushing in. God, I just had the most subtle bite ever out here. It just felt like a little bitty tick in the line. I set the hook, felt like I hooked him for a minute, but missed him. So I'm going to go back out in the same spot, try again. I'm just letting it sink all the way down. Giving it two pops and then holding my line up keeping it tight so I can feel everything. Instead of just, you see a lot of people just bounce, bouncing and put the rod back down, but you won't be able to feel these small winter bites. Very subtle sometimes. Ooh, it almost felt like one. There's one. Finally. What is that? It's not even shaking its head. It's so weird. Is that a flounder? It is a flounder. What the heck? 
Okay, not what we expected, but we're on the board. First fish of the day. Oh, he's gone. There we go. First fish of the day. Let's see if we can toss back out and get something else. Hopefully they're not all fonder. I mean, unless there's some keepers. But that's cool. All right, we just hooked a fish right here. I think it's a trout. Oh, it's another flounder. Goodness. Not what I expected at all. Definitely 100% thought that was a trout. Another little flounder. Release him. There we go. Second fish of the day. Let's see if we can catch something else. Another flounder right here, number three. Probably about 13 inches. The tide has definitely came in because the reef that was out to my left Whenever I got here, you could probably see about four or five inches of it. And now I can only see the top of the oyster. So probably about an inch. So I would say it came in by a few inches. Maybe that's the reason those flounder are biting, but hopefully we'll be able to catch some trout here. I just did a lure change here. Put on the soft dine in this greenish color because I think it looks cool. And uh, man, it is a slow day. If I didn't catch those flounder, I would have been skunked for sure. But starting to lose hope here although i am going to give it about another hour and we're going to see what happens maybe we'll be able to get on something maybe they'll start biting or maybe not but we're going to give it a fair chance finally i hooked up i think it has to be something little i'm going to have to trout finally Haha. Let's see. Just have 15 inches. Release on him. Oh! It's got bit again. Maybe we found something finally. That might be another one. Got a decent trout here. It is a decent trout. There we go. I was just reeling this one. Reeling it in because I'd gotten snagged. <laughs> there we go. Nice trout. Finally, something to save the day. That one's a keeper, and that's going on the stringer for a catch and cook for you guys. It has been a slow day, and that right there is a good 18-inch trout. Man, I'd gotten snagged, and I popped it off, and then I just started reeling, and it ate it. A little reaction bite. All right, I just had to do a battery swap because my GoPro died right after I caught that fish. Thank goodness not while I was fighting it, but here we go. Nice 18, almost 19-inch trout. Perfect size to keep. Caught him on this soft line right here. I just retied because my line was super frayed from the oyster, but... go out with our next cast that fish was sitting in what i believe to be about four to five foot of water maybe even shallower maybe even three and a half but i caught him i was doing this let it sink down five or six seconds and then pop it every two and i hit some moisture so i started reeling and he bit it like that so there we go we're gonna see if we can catch some more not know if i have oyster or a fish could be oyster but it looks like it's swimming. Oh, it's a flounder. Huh. Hug in the bottom, too. He's not even big. All right. So this guy right here makes four flounder, one trout. There we go.
Well, I didn't even turn the camera on you guys. I thought I was snagged on some oyster. Turns out it's a little trout. Here we go. Thanks, fish number three. They're just, they're not really in one area. They're just all scattered out here. I mean, I guess they are in one area. They're in like the four foot range, three, four foot range. But they're just scattered all out here. The one thing I've done that I've changed up if I, is I've started working my lure a lot quicker. I'll show you what I mean in a second. But here's one right here. Let's get a measurement on them and get a release. Crystal clear water release. Boom. There he goes. Oop. There you go, guys. I was working my way back. Got another trout right here. Nothing big. Man, I was just I was just thinking about how I was about to quit. I was making my last probably seven or eight cast. Getting a little tired out here. My back's starting to hurt. Been out here since 10 o'clock and it's like three. Guy right there. Nice release. But they always hit when you least expect it. Bend our soft time back. See if there's any more. All right, so it's been a pretty good day so far. I think we ended up with four trout and four flounder. Only one keeper though, but I'll show y'all him right here. Nineteen, eighteen, nineteen, 19, just almost 19 inch trout right there. And one on the stringer, y'all know what that means. We got a catch and cook coming up. So I'm about to head out right now, go flay up this fish so we can get that catch and cook going. But before we do, I just wanna say that 70% of you guys that watch the videos are not subscribed. So for every 1,000 views, think about that. 700 people are not subscribed. And just think about how much quicker the channel will grow if you did subscribe. So if you're one of those people and you're watching this video right now and you are enjoying it, go on down there and hit that subscribe button. Do me a big old favor. And also, hey, leave a like and a comment while you're at it and tell me if you're a new subscriber. So that's all I gotta say right now. We're gonna head in. It's been a good day. It's like 3.30 in the afternoon. My back is killing me because I've been out here since 10. But we were fishing on the stringer and that's what matters. So we're gonna head in. I'll see y'all guys in the car. So it is the next afternoon. I'm about to clean this fish up right here. I have it behind me. I've had it sitting on ice all night, so it's completely fine. I'm about to show y'all how to clean it because I haven't done that in quite a while. And speckled trout is probably the easiest fish to clean. So I'll show you how to do that. All you need is just a sharp knife and two clean swipes and you're done. We're gonna get it cleaned up. Then we're gonna head inside and cook this thing up for lunch. So I'll say too, we're gonna try something new today with the recipe. We're gonna put the GoPro on to get a little POV action of cleaning this fish so y'all can see exactly what it looks like from your own view. So let me throw this on and let's get to cleaning it. All right, so we got our fish right here, a nice 18, almost 19 speckled trout, and we got a new boa blade. So y'all check it out. Brand new, I haven't even used it on a fish yet. This is just the seven or seven and a half inch blade. I don't remember, tapered flex, so a little bit of bend in it. And I think this is really the perfect one for cleaning just about every fish you find in our bays down here. So all we're gonna do is take our fish and you can start on whichever side you want. I just like to put my fingers right on the other side of that. That gives you a good grip. And then run the knife straight down to the backbone. So make a diagonal cut right behind the gill plate to the backbone. And then we turn the knife. We break through those bones right there. And once we get through, it's super easy. So once we get through that, we just slide the knife down. If you feel like it's not cutting too well, it's probably because you're, cut, you're caught on this swim bladder right here. So this little white thing. And that stuff is like gum. You cannot cut through it. It's very tough. It's like gum. It just pulls apart. So you just want to get on the other side of that and it'll make it a breeze all the way off. I like to take mine all the way off instead of leaving your mom. I feel like I get more meat in the end. Flip it over do the same thing on the other side. Diagonal cut. Turn the knife. Wait, break through the rib bones. I like to pull it to the very edge of the table. Oop, and we missed a little bit there. There we go. Missed a little bit, but we came back and saved it. Got that all cleaned up. Now what we do, just take our fillet, get the scales off the knife, and you start at the bottom, cut down and in. If you wonder why I'm sniffling, I might sound a little bit sick. I have a little cold right now, not the big C. Cut it at the end. Once you get down to the skin, you turn completely sideways and it's raining. Okay, we're gonna hurry up. That's crazy, it's not supposed to rain today. Turn it completely sideways and you really just start pulling the skin and moving the knife back and forth. You don't even have to push the knife forward. Skin's completely off, perfect fillet. Last thing we do is, oh, it's really starting to rain out here. Last thing we do is just cut the bones out. That is a boneless, skinless, speckled trout fillet. 
We're gonna do it on the other one real quick. Same thing, this is the reason I like to have it on the edge of the table. You can bump this knife up to right there and really get down level with it, with the skin. The biggest problem you'll have when taking the skin off the speckled trout is that your knife will cut to the skin. But just like that, cut our bones out. There we go, we got two of them. Let's head inside, get how this rain because it's starting to come down. Let's go cook these bad boys up. So we got our fish all cleaned up, washed off and dried. We're in the kitchen right now and today we're gonna be making air fried fish. We got the air fryer right here and I have yet to cook some fish in it like this. So this is gonna be the first time. I'm gonna go over the ingredients real quick. So obviously we have our two speckled trout fillets looking real nice, not even one worm in them, which is great. Then we have our breadcrumbs and a tablespoon of butter and of course, just some seafood seasoning. So originally I wanted to make Parmesan crusted fish, but whenever I went to look in the fridge, I couldn't find any Parmesan. So we're just gonna do it with only breadcrumbs right now and hopefully we'll be able to get a nice crust on it in the air fryer. So let's get right into it. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and season up our fish. You can use whatever seasoning you like. This is just one that I have right here. A little coastal seasoning. Put quite a bit on it because we're only gonna season one side and we're only gonna put crust on one side. So a lot of seasoning right there, rub it in. Some of it's gonna fall off. That's all right though. Make sure we get the ends so every bite's just as good. All right, got that all seasoned up. Next thing we're gonna do is dump some butter on it. Just a little bit, this is just gonna help everything stick. So we get our butter on there, we rub that in. And it doesn't take much. Like I said, that is just one tablespoon, just enough to get it moist. All right, then we take our breadcrumbs right here. I put a little bit of parsley flakes in it just to give it some color. And we're just gonna lay our fish down and push it. Oh yeah. And we're not looking for a crazy thick crust here. Get our fish all nice and pushed in there. As you can see, it's not much. It's just a little bit of breading on top, just enough to hopefully give it a crunch. We're gonna lay it on a rack. I don't know why I put the butter thing there. Got it on the air fryer rack. Next piece. Same thing. Now you could absolutely do this without the breadcrumbs, without the crust, but I'm just curious to see if this thing actually works good, the air fryer. So we got our other piece of fish. There is the two speckled trout fillets, bread it up. Let's go ahead and put them in. All right, so for the air fryer, if you click, if we turn it on right here and we click the fish button, that's gonna put it at 320 degrees for 15 minutes. I don't want that. I cooked salmon in here the other day. I did not do it with crust on it. But I cooked salmon in here the other day and it was just a little bit overdone after 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set our own temperature here. We're gonna do 375 for, this thing is crazy loud, for eight minutes. And we're gonna start with that. After it's done with this, the fish should almost be cooked through. And then what I think I'm gonna do is turn it up to 400, put the fish on the very top rack and do that for like three minutes. So let's put this in here, we're just gonna put it in the middle rack. Up one more. There we go. Close it up and it's going. We'll come back in eight minutes, see what it looks like. So the air fryer just went off. Let me pull this out. That was eight minutes at 375. Take a look right there. It looks dry, definitely looks a little bit dry, but it is starting to look cooked. So I think what we're gonna do is we are going to spray it. We're gonna spray it with a little bit of spray butter. This is just gonna help moisten it up and hopefully help with that crust. There we go. Spray that all around. Oh. Put it back in and now this time we're going to move it to the top rack close as we can get it. Close it up and now we're gonna go for 400 and three minutes. So we just finished up with the next three minutes on 400 top shelf. 
Let's take a look at it right here. And there we go. Looks pretty good. A little bit dry in some spots you can see out here, but looks good. Let's get a bite of this and I'll tell you how it tastes. One last look at it. Looks good. Nice and white, flaky on the inside. Let's give it a taste real quick. I'm just eating this little piece. I'm not too hungry, I can't really taste much with the clogged up nose, but we'll give it a bite. I think it's pretty good. Man, the fish, the one thing I've noticed about the air fryer, we've had it for like two weeks, and the one thing I've noticed is that everything is super juicy when it comes out. I checked the temp on it, and it was well over like 150 or something, so it's way cooked, but yeah, it's pretty good. Not much crust on the top. I probably could have left it in there for like a minute longer, but the flavor is there. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. If you are, like always, guys, thank you so much. That's all I have for you today, and I will see you all next time. Peace.